According to a regional bar association, approximately 63% of people who take the bar exam to practice law in a region pass. Find the approximate probability that at least 66% of 400 randomly sampled people taking the bar exam will pass. So this 66% here, um, or 0.66, is the sample proportion. But what is the population proportion? That is going to be this value right here. So 63% as a decimal is 0.63. So the next part of this problem is asking us to check conditions to ensure that we're allowed to use the central limit theorem. So that we have like a simple random sample, that our sample size isn't too large, um, but also it's saying we want to calculate n times p and n times 1 minus p. We want to make sure that they're both more than 10 or possibly equal to 10. So to start with, the expected number of people that pass is going to be 400 times this 0.63. So that's going to be the number that goes here. That's going to be n times the value here, p. So I'm going to do that in a calculator. So that was 0.63 times 400. So 252 people. And that is certainly greater than 10. So that's good. Now the number of people that we expect to fail, okay, so to answer this, it's still gonna be, we take 400, but now we're gonna multiply it by one minus P. So one minus P, that's one minus 0.63, or 0.37. We're gonna multiply 0.37 by 400, and we get this value here, uh, 148. That's how many people will probably fail, and I'll put that here, that was 148. And this is also greater than 10. So all conditions for the central limit theorem have been met. Now they're also providing us with the formula for the standard error, so I'm going to go ahead and compute that too. Uh, so that was, it's p, which is 0.63 times 1 minus p, which is 0.37. We divide by the sample size of 400. And then we take the square root of this number. Okay, and it says to round it to three decimal places, so 0 0.024 should do. 0 0.024. Now they're asking us to use a z-score, so I'm going to you know follow their approach here. But if we want a test statistic or a z-score for the values that appear within this problem, what we want to do is take this value, which is 0.66, that's what p hat represents. Subtract this value, 0.63, that's p, and divide by the standard error or the standard deviation. So p hat, that's 0.66, that came from the sample. We subtract 0.63, that's the value stated here. And we're going to divide it by this, the standard error, 0.024. And we get a z-score of 1.25. So let's see, I'll put that here. Round it to two decimal places. All right, well, now we're asking for the probability, and this is something that you can use StatCrunch for. So I'm going to go and open up StatCrunch. And the nice thing about using a z-score is we can now just use the normal calculator. So if I go to Stat, calculators and select normal because we're talking about a z-score we're talking about a distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one so the probability so just to get the right probability here find the probability that at least so 0.66 pass okay that means they even have it stated over here that's like the area to the right going back to here we're going to therefore choose greater than or equal to and I want to put in my z-score of 1.25. Okay, so I'll compute this. And this is the probability here. And if we round it to three decimal places, that's 0 0.106. So about 10.6%. 
Okay, so explain why the tail area in the figure above represents the correct probability. All right, so the probability is represented by the area to the right of the z-score, which was 1.25, because the question asks for the probability that the sample proportion will be, let's see, I want to choose the right one here, at least, and which translates to a z-score of, well, still 1.25. This means the question is asking for the probability that the z-score will be 1.25 and we're going to select greater. Okay. The last part of this problem is saying find the area of the shaded region in the figure to determine the probability. So we actually already did this part. Um, you know, it's this value right here. I think the only difference is they're now saying record this as a percent, but also round to the nearest whole number. So essentially we're gonna multiply this number. Maybe I'll bring in a calculator. We're gonna take that value, which was 0 0.106. To convert it to a percent, you would multiply it by 100. And for rounding to the nearest percent whole number, that would be to this zero, which will round it up to 11. So it's about 11%. I'll check my answer. And that's it for this problem.